Welcome to Excel Business Statistics video number 33. And in this video, we want to see how to chart the bell curve. We want to be able to change the x value to 75 and instantly our chart updates. Now, anytime you're creating an Excel chart, you actually have to create all the data and then make the chart. So we're going to have to list a bunch of x's, probabilities, some z values, and some probabilities that represent just this particular value. Now, to get the x value, well, we're going to start at whatever x value is four standard deviations below the mean. So down here, I already have four standard deviation. Let's figure out that value. We're going to take the mean minus, there's the standard deviation, times four. When I hit Enter, so we want our x on our horizontal axis to start at 34. The upper value, well, there's the mean plus the standard deviation times 4. So 114 will be the last value on the horizontal axis. Now to create our x values, we'll use the dynamic spilled array function sequence. Now how many rows do we need? Well, we need 114 minus 34, but we want to include that lower value, so we add 1 comma, we don't need columns, and the start will be 34. So when I hit Enter, it spills from 34, control down arrow, to 114, control up arrow. Now we can use our norm.dist function. That's for the x values. For x, I'm going to click in the top one and then use the spilled range operator, pound. That'll get everything that spills from that top cell comma, there's the mean, comma, the standard deviation, comma. And we do not want to use true. We're not doing cumulative. This is where we use probability mass function, as we saw last video. We saw the big math formula. So we're going to use false or zero to determine the height of the normal bell curve. So zero close parentheses. And there are the probabilities. Very small, and you can see as we get to the mean, the mean value will be the highest point in the chart. So it keeps getting bigger. That's the tallest. And then these keep getting smaller. Now we'll come back and do these in just a moment. But let's plot just the x and the probability. Highlight the labels. Control Shift Down Arrow. Control Backspace. That jumps back to the active cell. We have horizontal axis, and we're going to use an area curve. So insert over to charts. Area isn't up here, so we click the chart dialog box launcher. We want to go to all charts on the left. We want to select area. And this is very convenient. We can hover and see it actually put the x values on the horizontal axis and plotted the area. So that's the chart we want. Click OK. Now, we're going to have to do a lot of different things to this chart. Right off the bat, I'm going to select the chart title, type an equal sign. That shoots me up to the formula bar. I've already created a meaningful chart title that tells us what the mean and standard deviation is for the test. Come up to the green plus. Let's add axis title. So I'm going to check this. I'm just going to type in the vertical axis label like area equals probability, and Enter. For this one, I'm going to link it, equal sign, and there it is, x equals test value. I don't want the grid line, so I'm going to select and delete. I would like a legend, so down here I'm going to check. Now I want to move this, so I select it, Control-1. I'm going to try putting it at the top. Later, we'll have a, another element in this legend that represents the area from negative infinity up to our x. I'm going to move this. And now let's create our z. The z will be a secondary axis listed below the x. Equals, open parentheses, I need all the x values. So I click on the top cell, and I'm going to type pound. We're going to subtract from each x value the mean, close parentheses, and divide by the standard deviation. 
and Enter. So sure enough, that one's minus 4, Control down arrow. That 114 is four standard deviations above the mean. Control up arrow. Now I want a legend that explicitly lists probability less than or equal to 99. And then I want to show the probability, which is right there. I already did individual norm.dist. So we're going to create a text formula, equal sign. And in double quotes, I want p, open parentheses, x, in double quotes. So far, all we have is text. I join it to this comparative operator. There's only two things in this formula. If I Control Enter, you can see the label so far, F2. And I'm going to join it to the particular x value. And then join that to some text. So double quotes, close parentheses, equal sign. That's all the text we want. So end double quote. If we look at it, that's pretty cool so far. But F2. Let's join it to and watch what happens when I click on this very messy with lots of decimals number. When I hit Enter, I get lots of messy decimals. And I don't want that in the chart. So F2 around B6, we'll just round it. So we'll use the round function. There's the number, comma, the number of digits we're going to round to is 4. Close parentheses. And that is going to be a beautiful label. And it will be dynamic. If I type 75, that is a beautiful label. Control Z. Now, to get everything less than 69 to show up as a color here, in this column, we have to show the probability when the x value is less than or equal to 69. Otherwise, we need to show nothing. So we can use the if function. Now the logical test is we're going to have to look at each x value. So I click on the top cell, type the spilled range operator, and I ask of each x, are you less than or equal to 69? Then we type a comma. The value if true, that means it's less than 69. We need to show the probability. Click in the top cell, hashtag pound the spilled range operator. That's what's going to go in the cell if it's true. Comma. If it's false, we have to show nothing. And the syntax in a formula to show nothing is double quote, double quote. Close parentheses. And that's our formula. When I hit Enter and scroll down, sure enough, the probabilities only show up 69 and less. Above, it's showing nothing. Now we have to add this column to our chart. So right click, select data. In the Select Data Source dialog box, we want to add a series of numbers. So I click Add. The series name, that's going to be the beautiful label we just created. Now series values, you have to be careful. Highlight this and then delete it. Delete it before you click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow and Control Backspace. There we have the values. Click OK. Now we're going to have to come back and edit to show the Z values later. But for the time being, we're going to click OK. And there you go. That's absolutely beautiful. If we change this to 75, it's just like magic. Now Control Z. We need to tell this section of the chart. So I click on it, and we need to tell it to go to the secondary axis. Now if this doesn't open up automatically, use Control-1, then click Secondary Axis. Now it's a little off kilter, and we don't need this, so I'm going to select it and delete. Now we need to go back in, right click to Select Data. For the first set of probabilities, that's the blue area, all the probabilities, we're going to show the x. But to get the z on there, we're going to select this one and change the x value. Edit, and these will be z. So click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. Click OK. When I click OK, they don't show up. But now I go up to the green plus, axes, arrow. And there it is, secondary horizontal. Now it shows up. Let's click Escape. It shows up in the top, but we're going to select it. And in Access Options, we're going to go to Labels, 
and down to Label Position, we're going to say, hey, I want to show it low. And now we have the Z values below the X values. Now if I click on X, the increment of 4 is perfect because I can see the mean. But if we click on Z, Control-1, over in Labels, I want to specify the internal unit. Now here's the weird thing. It's incrementing by 1, but it's based on this axis. So it's listing all these Z's based on all of these single digit increments. What I really want is standard deviation. So since the standard deviation is 10, when I type a 10, there we go. This is incrementing based on units of 10. There's our x, there's our z. We can make it a little bit wider. The last thing we need to do, let's actually resize this, is I want a label here to list x and z. So insert shapes, rectangle. I'm going to click and draw and drag. Double click, and let's type x, enter z. Select it all. And in the Home ribbon tab, I'm going to add red font. Now selecting the outside edge, Control-1, no fill, no line. And that is looking good. Pointing to the outside edge, there's my Move cursor. I can make sure it's in the right place. And there's our beautiful chart. I can come up and type 100. And just like that, the orange fills it out, and the probability is listed above. And if I change this to 54, I can see the probability of about 2.28. And there's the orange probability. 69 and Enter. Now this chart is showing everything up to the 69. If we want to show everything above, well, you could create this whole thing over from scratch. Or we could use this as a template and change three things. Now I want to copy this sheet, so we're going to learn a great trick. Let's click on the worksheet and drag up. That little black downward pointing arrow means I'm going to drop it here. But look at that piece of paper. If you hold Control, a plus shows up on that piece of paper. That means we're copying. Now, to copy it, you have Control and the mouse pressed down. You actually have to let go of the mouse, but continue holding Control, then let go of Control. Now, I want to double click and rename this. Above chart without a space because I already have a sheet with a space. And the first thing we have to change is this if function. It's not less than or equal to, it's greater than or equal to. When we amend this formula and hit Enter, now everything below that hurdle is showing nothing. The hurdle and above is showing the probability. We can see in the chart the orange is on the upper end. Now that label, which is this cell right here, has the incorrect operator and the incorrect amount. We'll change the operator to greater than or equal to. And then we have to, because this is showing everything up to the x, F2 to get the upper end 100% minus whatever that is and Enter. Same with this, although we're not showing this anywhere. And there it is. There's the label there and there. Now when I change this, hey, I want to know what the probability of getting 80 or more when I hit Enter. There's our visualization. Actually, it looks like our X changed when we widen it. So I'm going to select this, Control-1, Labels, and let's specify this as 4 and Tab. I think that means over here, too. Click Control-1. Labels, we want to specify 4. Now we saw how to do below and above. If you want to see how to do between, here's an example here. But we're not going to see that in this video. All right, in this video we saw how to create a visualization for the normal bell-shaped curve and show probability on the upper end and the lower end. All right, next video we're going to have a few more examples of solving problems using the normal bell-shaped curve. 
All right, we'll see you next video.